It is not very often that an architect from Africa gets to receive a top-notch accolade. In fact, Francis Kier has become the first African architect to win the annual Pritzker Prize, architecture's greatest honor. Kier is famous for his designs that use locally sourced materials. And his work, like the Opera Village Complex, is acclaimed for its contribution to cultural education in his homeland, Burkina Faso. Pritzker Organization Chairman Tom Pritzker says Kier is both an architect and a servant, improving upon the lives of his fellow citizens. Now, Francis Kier himself joins me. Hi there. Congratulations on the big win to start with. How does it feel to be the first African ever to win this, uh, you know, huge accolade that a lot of people call the Nobel Prize of Architecture? It's fantastic. It's fabulous. I don't know how to express it. I'm still speechless. You know, it's it. I am overwhelmed. You know, it's an overwhelming feeling of honor. It's um, you know. I've been doing this job for years, and uh, suddenly I see myself connected to the Prisca family. Wow, wow, wow. Was this something you were expecting? Because you are quite an authority in the architecture world, aren't you? Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I haven't expected indeed, but I have been always taking every single job coming to me um, very seriously and trying to make the best out of it. And that is why, you know, I'm so, that's what we do. You have to do your job and then things just happen. Yes, I want to talk to you about how, what's your understanding of doing your job uh, the best way possible, you know, going into the details of your understanding of what a good piece of architecture is. However, I want to talk about first, uh, you being the first African architect to win such an accolade. Do you think African architecture is just getting there? Or maybe uh, the attention, the media attention or international attention has been unjustly lacking? Yeah. <clears throat> no, that is one thing. With architecture, is that is an issue, you know. We don't have that many schools of architecture in the continent, you know. This is one clear thing. And then architecture study is simply very expensive, you know. And so uh, there, uh, there is also a lack of investment like to develop architecture that makes the difference, you know. And now I'm very happy because after having studied in Germany, I was saying, you know, Africa is full of opportunities. This is where I should go and use my skills to create something that is at the same time beautiful, working very well, but inspiring for my people, you know, and that's what I simply did. And I'm, 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 I'm lucky, I'm lucky, so happy that the Prisca Foundation, the jury found my work. Well, of course, there is a nuance when I say that the attention has been lacking. The, there is a lot of African creativity coming into the limelight. We hear of concepts such as, of course, Afrofuturism or you know, African Renaissance and things like that. Do you feel like you belong to any of these um, running themes or, you know, um, you know? No, I have to tell you something like uh, from the continent, people being calling from Brazil, from Mexico, from around the world, you know? You had architect, I will, I will never imagine I will be able to speak to them, you know? Those like Gary, okay, I know, uh, um, you know, Renzo Piano, and I know a lot of Jack and John Vell and, and many, many other more, uh, you know, and like a ton and so that I love. But then, you know, there is one architect that just calls me, is Sir David uh, Ajay, who built the museum in Washington, he just said, Francis, wow, my brother, you know, becoming the leader of African Renaissance, you know, Afrofuturism. Hey, you know how that mean to me, you know, you know, it's a lot. So. And I mean, it's probably too much to say, but would you say that you feel like you're leading this movement, Afrofuturism? No, I love to be connected to this great movement, which consists on showing, you know, the potential of the continent, you know, how people really create, you know, 
how colorful, how inspiring, and how joyful Africans are dealing with topic of design, creating things, you know, and showing a great face of the continent beside what we know, or media want to say that is simply misery, that is simply war, that is simply hunger. You know, we have people designing, creating, full of enthusiasm, you know, enjoying things and life, you know, you know, and to be connected to that movement, hey, how happy I am, you know? Amazing. Okay. Well, I, I want to pick it up where you left off because I want to ask you about the role of architecture in a society. You uh, were born in Burkina Faso. It's one of the world's uh, least educated and most impoverished regions. So a lot of people might say, architecture, top class architecture in Burkina Faso, you know, they, they might actually find it kind of too luxurious. So in that sense, please tell us what is the role of good architecture in uh, impoverished yeah. and underserved societies? Yeah. So in that kind of places like Burkina Faso, um, good architecture can be seen when you come to that place, you try to look at around, what is existing, how can I, you know, use these, sometimes improve it and look at um, how, what kind of techniques exist, material, and try to get people be involved in the process. So where you can pass on knowledge, you know, through the building, and the building are not simply there to impress, but there is a, a process with knowledge transfer with, you know, um, uh, where people participate, contribute, and where they feel themselves elevated, you know. And at least, you know, if you're thinking about the migration in Europe, you know, when you create jobs for people, you know, all of these can be seen in that what I'm doing. And at least, if you create comfort, comfort and beauty for the most underserved groups of communities in these places, then this is good architecture. Okay, well, very well said. Um, and also, you know, you, you inspire, you know, if you create something that is inspiring the youth, you know, the users and all those that just see the building. And then at the end, they look at around and see, wow, they just use the material we know to create this, you know. This is more than I can explain to you. You are changing people's mind, people's way of seeing things, you know, of doing things. And really, they will stop to make cheap copy from the West. And this is good architecture in Africa. Lovely. Okay, one last question, because we're running out of time. Um, do you have any message for budding creatives coming from impoverished and underserved areas? Yeah. No, not just for uh, p uh, p poor regions, but I want to, want to say a message is for everyone. Really try to do your best, you know, to create beauty and comfort, let's say luxury for people. Even the poor deserve quality and beauty, but also the rich need to be aware about the potential, you know, for humanity and not to waste resources and really look together for a solution, how we can all make our world better, you know, in front of climate change, you know, of horror, very, uh, uh, of conflict, you know, on the few left resources, you know, that is important to work together to really see our profession as a way to create a great service to humanity. All right, Francis Kier. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and sharing your architectural perspective with us and congratulations once again.